In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. Statistics tells us, via the Fermi paradox, that alien life should be abundant in the universe. What, what's happening? Why do we not see it? Well, Enrico Fermi, a physicist, uh, suggested that essentially in a billions of years old universe, one alien race should have developed the technology capable to visit other planets or star systems and inhabit those. And then maybe another million years later, they can then send out other expeditions, you know, two more to other planets and then two becomes four and so on and so forth. And so over millions or even billions of years, there should be multiple, multiple alien races out there. We should be literally tripping over each other according to the maths. And so the big problem, the big question with the Fermi paradox is basically, where is everybody? I really like this theory. I personally though, do not think that I personally think if there is extraterrestrial life out there that they are going to leave us alone unless we do something that's so grand that they have to get involved. I have a feeling once we figure out how to manipulate space travel as far as being able to fluently travel through space at the speed of light, we will probably never be accepted by extraterrestrial life if that's even a real thing. Why would they want to mess with a life form that is not even capable of planetary travel to its fullest without it taking forever? Why would they want to mess with a life form that is extremely hostile and has a good chance at attacking them if they were to make a visit? It just makes sense for them to leave us alone until we are capable of becoming more than what we currently are. That's just a theory that I like to run with personally. They could generate human body parts. These parts responded to certain external stimuli, obeying some kind of neural processing center within the plastic layers themselves. With a probable research center in the city of Bielefeld, the company only remained in biotechnology experimentation until the year 2000, when a serious accident with the machinery and a lawsuit from one of the workers exposed part of the company's secret work. As a result, it was dismantled in a matter of weeks. I, I'm i pretty sure this is like a creepypasta type video. It's not real. But it does lead me to speculate and theorize about potential cloning capabilities. And it would not surprise me if we are truly capable of cloning. Maybe not to the extent of having a full body clone. But from infancy to adult, I think that that is actually a real thing. I want to know what he knows. He was recently asked if there's any story he is truly scared to cover, and he responded with UFOs. He said there is a side to this story that gets so dark he couldn't even tell his own wife. And he said there is a spiritual aspect of it that he doesn't even understand, which makes me wonder what the heck are they hiding from us? Just check this clip out. Are there things that you're scared to cover? You're sitting there saying, Wow, yeah. this is like soul yeah. crushing, like to the point where like it really scares yeah, you there, in your th soul. There are two. Yes, there are two. Um, one is the 2020 election. The second thing that bothers me is the UFO story. And, uh, you know, the more you dig into that and talk to people with knowledge, with actual knowledge of there are parts of that story that I do not understand at all that are really, really, really dark. It's so dark that. I, you know, haven't told my wife about it. I mean, I, I haven't verified any of this, but this is not just stuff that I read on the internet. I know you all are very, very grounded in that story. So I think I know, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. but there's some stuff there that's just like, man, I, I'm not even sure what that means. There's a spiritual component there that I, I don't fully understand. Um, so yes, that story bothers me. Part of it is the public can't deal with it. It's too far out. The implications are too um, profound. And so, and I understand that because I've heard things where I'm just like, oh, man, I, I don't even really want to know that, oh, yeah, honestly. Deeply so. disturbing stuff. You know, forget like saucers you know I mean? and technology. It's yeah, deeply, yeah. No, deeply no, no, disturbing no. stuff that I haven't even told Natalie. Yep. I agree with you. It's so disturbing. I feel like I personally could handle it. I want to know everything. Please lay it on me. I would love to be in his shoes to know what he knows if he's been informed on certain information. I definitely would be all down for it, whether it's scary or not. 
I would love to know. And it really sucks that there's people out there that say that they know these amazing, dark, scary, but incredible things, and they don't tell us about it. Like, what? Why? Why do you not share this information? Is it under an NDA? Is your life on the line if you share this information? I really would like to know, because if I had this information that is apparently scary and dark, I'd probably still share it because I feel like the world should know. We deserve to know what there is to know. There should not be any secrets. If we went to the moon, then why aren't there any stars in this picture? If you look up to the sky at night, you see stars, right? Then why did the stars disappear in this picture? I'm not a huge believer in this conspiracy of there's no stars in the photo and I know that when you have extremely high light that you have to lower the aperture and when you lower the aperture it makes everything extremely dark and according to science and people on the moon it's so bright because of the reflection of the sun it drowns out everything that you have to lower the aperture just to be able to see what's on the moon in the first place and that kind of still falls in the same line like if you are in a very bright city say you're in new york city it's extremely bright out at night you look up into the sky you're not going to see the night sky as well as you were to go see it in a countryside and look up in, at the night sky with no lights in your area the sky is so much more visible but as soon as you're surrounded by a whole bunch of light it's like it drowns out the stars. So I don't necessarily fall in the line of believing this photo to be a fake photo of the moon, but I understand the reason behind, the science behind why there isn't stars in the photo. I just left this video in here because I'm really curious is if that is a painted dog, if someone actually painted that dog to have those marks on it, or if that's a certain breed of dog that I'm not quite familiar with because I really like that that coat. I think that's really pretty. So if you know anything about this type of dog, if that's a real thing, please leave a comment down below letting me know because I'm very curious to know if it's real or not. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. Whew, listen, in those Vatican Ar five miles of underground Vatican archives, right. there's been a few people that have come out talking who have had access to these Vatican archives. They can't say specifically everything they saw, but one guy did come on a documentary on History Channel years ago and talked about the fact that they had bones of beings that weren't human. From their perspective, they weren't human bodies. They had books and texts down there that nobody's ever been able to read or access that talk about technology, flying devices, and all these other incredible things that were hidden during the Inquisitions. Because during the Inquisitions, they were suppressing technology heavy because they wanted to keep their boot on the necks of the people. The Inquisitions were so brutal. They over 80 million people over the course of 700 years ordered underneath the popes. That really held us back because we should have been on the moon in the 1800s if it wasn't for the inquisitions. So people that they don't know because they don't research and dig deeper into the translations of these texts. And even if you look at the Sinai Bible, there's 14,000 differences between the Sinai Bible, which predates the King James Version. And in the Sinai Bible, there was no crucifixion. I didn't know there was five miles underneath the Vatican of archives that is intense i would love to go to that place and explore if i could just be a fly on the wall man i would have a field day even if i didn't understand what i was looking at i would be extremely happy to be in that situation and it makes me wonder like why can't they talk about the things that they see down there like why is it so hush hush we shouldn't have that that should not be a thing it, i think 2025, when that comes here, no more secrets. Everything needs to be in the air.
There's an idea that many scientists believe if it became widely accepted, it could literally end society as we know it. And it stems from the question, do humans have free will? I have two arguments for why we might not. You see, in 1980, there was an experiment where participants were hooked up to a brain monitoring machine that showed their brains were making decisions for them 300 milliseconds before they became consciously aware of their own choice. Later studies showed that when given the choice between pressing two buttons, some brains would decide a whole seven to 10 seconds before the participant noted that they'd made their decision. It's after this decision has been made in your subconscious that your brain becomes aware and you you become convinced you're in the process of making that decision. The second argument comes from how did you decide to watch this video? Well, most of you probably scrolled by it and then made the decision to stay, but the decision you made to stay was only possible because I made this video. I was only able to make this video because I had access to the internet and a computer. Both the internet and computers were invented before I was born, so I never had the choice as to whether I wanted to be exposed to them in the first place, yet here we both are. The idea is that for a decision to really truly be ours, we have to control the circumstances, which we very rarely do. I found this kind of interesting because I like the concept of whether or not do we have free will or not. I personally do believe that we do have free will. I think that our free will has been limited due to elites, if you will, people of power that, that want to keep us at a more shallow level of freedom. They don't want us to have the absolute free will because if that was the case, then we would be able to do so much more than being limited by financial burden and all of the other governmental collectives that kind of weighs most of everybody down. And that's why I say that I think our free will has been limited. We still have it, but there's only so much we can do with it, if that makes any sense. And that's a darn shame. Check this out, you guys. This is apparently a trip to the first ice ring. It gets a lot more interesting because they have to take a helicopter in order to reach their destination. Now, check this video out and let me know what you guys think, all right? Just check it out. dry lands with waterfall I mean what do you guys think look at this this looks so pristine so clean it looks like it hasn't been touched touch with yeah what if this is somewhere in Seattle <laughs> what if this is somewhere in Seattle you know what I'm saying use it use your discernment I mean, I've never seen anything like this before. But look at that water. Look at the snow caps. Wow. I mean, what do you guys think? You know what I'm saying? They're not just going to come out here and start talking about it blatantly, you know? And for us to get this, you know, this is the best. I mean, nobody's going to go through hell to just show us stuff like this. You know what I'm saying? What do you guys think about this? Honestly, my biggest problem with this video is there was a super hard cut when it transitioned to the greenery and the landmass. It was interesting and I was extremely excited because that's something that I'm waiting for is for like a, a super rich entrepreneur to go out there and like do some exploration and document it. I'm, I'm wanting that so badly, but it seems like we don't get that. But it's upsetting because I'm pretty sure that this is not past the ice wall. 
I think to be honest with you, this is somewhere in Alaska. The moment when Joe Rogan realized he was half the man that Alex Jones was. They are interdimensionally sucking the essence of our youth. Right. And they believe they're possessed by an off-world entity. They do? Yeah, and then, Joe, I've been on air 22 years. I don't get into aliens, metaphysical, religion, any of that. I've studied the elite, and I've also communicated with a lot of the top people. And, and, and if you want to know, I will actually break down right now the best knowledge right now of what's happening on the planet. What's happening? Let me give you a basic just thought. Okay. I love when you can use that word with full confidence. Yeah. I've never said that. Let me give you a basic just stalt. I'd right. be like, oh, my God, I'm such a fraud. No, you're not. You, no, but that's what I think if I use that word. No, you'll get all this. You'll already have most okay. of the static because you're a bookworm, a research worm, in a good way. The elite are all about transcendence and living forever and the secrets of the universe, and they want to know all this. Some are good, some are bad, some are a mix. But the good ones don't ever want to organize. The bad ones don't want to organize because they lust after power. Powerful uh, consciousnesses don't want to dominate other people. They want to empower them so they don't tend to get together until things are really late in the game. Then they come together. Evil's always defeated because good is so much stronger. And we're on this planet, and Einstein's physics showed it, Max Planck's physics showed it all. There's at least 12 dimensions. And now that's why all the top scientists and billionaires are coming out saying it's a false hologram. It is artificial the computers are scanning it and finding tension points where it's artificially projected and gravity's bleeding in to this universe that's what they call dark matter so we're like a thought or a dream that's a wisp in some computer program some god's mind whatever they're proving it all it's all coming out now there's like this sub transmission zone below the third dimension it's just turned over to the most horrible things is what it resonates to. And it's trying to get up into the third dimension that's just a basic level consciousness to launch into the next levels. And our species is already way up in the fifth, sixth dimension, consciously, our best people. But there's this big war trying to, like, basically destroy humanity because humanity has free will, and there's a decision to which level we want to go to. We have free will, so evil's allowed to come and contend, not just good. And the elites themselves believe they're racing using human technology to try to take our best minds and build some type of breakaway civilization where they're going to merge with machines, transcend, and break away from the failed species that is man, which is kind of like a false transmission because they're thinking what they are is ugly and bad, projecting it onto themselves instead of believing, no, it's a human test about building us up. And so Google was set up. 18, 19 years ago, this was, I knew about this before it was declassified, I'm just saying I have good sources, that they wanted to build a giant artificial system, and Google believes that the first artificial intelligence will be a supercomputer based on the neuron activities of the hive mind of humanity with billions of people wired into it with the Holy internet of shit. things and so all of our thoughts go into it and we're actually building a computer that has real neurons in real time that's also psychically connected to us that are organic creatures so that they will have current prediction powers future prediction powers a true crystal ball but the big secret is, once you have a crystal ball and know the future, you can add stimuli beforehand and make decisions that control the future. And so then it's the end of consciousness and free will for individuals, as we know, and a true 2.0 in a very bad way, hive mind consciousness with an AI jacked into everyone, knowing our hopes and dreams, delivering it to us, not in some PKD wirehead system where we plug in and give up on consciousness because of unlimited pleasure, but because we were already wired in and absorbed before we knew it by giving over our consciousness to the system by our daily decisions that it was able to manipulate and control into a larger system. There's now a human counter-strike taking place to shut this off before it gets fully into place and to block these systems and to try to have an actual debate about where humanity goes and cut off the pedophiles and psychic vampires that are control of this AI system before humanity is destroyed. Wait a minute, humanity the is only in control of AI? How'd, well, they get, how'd the pedophiles get in control of well, AI? Well, the, the pedophiles, at a, at a whatever level, they rule. the devil, whatever you want to call it, this interdimensional thing that gives them advanced off-world technology, the fallen one that's not of this world, is giving them advanced knowledge what? What about are you talking no, no. What systems is, what is that have that? already been used before on other populations. What? Is that Satan? But what are you, what are you talking Satan. about? 
That's but, Satan. But explain that. You just you're well, saying I mean, something Satan becomes insane. something that the, you know the stupid preacher tells you about who's totally controlled or something you read about on you know in the news or TV. Right. But this is an interdimensional force that wants to influence us to build something that absorbs us and kills us rather than the divine uh, free will we're given to build something much better that empowers the, the species. So the species is now making a decision Where are you about its entire from? future. Where are you getting this from? from? That's what it is. But where are you getting it from? I know, from, the, from looking at all the data, researching it, studying it, watching the... This was a really quick five minutes for me. I was enjoying the conversation as silly as it sounds. I believe that there's already a supercomputer in play that elites are using already. And it, it kind of falls in the line of like, for example, if you watch YouTube videos, it's in, they call it the algorithm and that there's an algorithm for everything. That's the supercomputer because it's getting better and better at finding the things that you like to keep you suppressed in a way, but it allows the elites to get a better understanding of what's going to happen because, like you said, they kind of can see the future and they can pump a certain level of content to help move that future in a way that works in their favor. It sounds really crazy, but it's kind of, it's kind of real in a way. Uh, for example, you know, you like watching conspiracy videos and theory videos and scary videos. Don't you notice that YouTube recommends you things that you like? Or when you're going through Facebook or Instagram or whatever you go through, that it shows you things that are of interest to you. Again, they call that the algorithm, but is the algorithm a bigger picture utilized by someone greater than the algorithm itself? And that sounds a little off the wall, but I feel like that is kind of where it is leading to. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts because it's probably just smoke and mirrors, but it is something to really take into consideration. You may finally know who or what the biblical God or deity actually is. And it's all thanks to a find of scriptures in the Nag Hammadi Desert in 1945. Check this out. Quick disclaimer, this is not a religious channel. This is an all love and light to all walks of life and faith. The biblical God or what we consider Yahweh or God Most High within the Old and even in the New Testament writings is what we would call a storm god or a storm deity. And in 1945, there was a section of scriptures that had been recovered called the Nag Hammadi Library. This is an incredible treasure trove of scripture and included things like the Gospel of Thomas, as well as the secret book of John, which is what I'm going to share from today. The secret book of John or the Apocryphon of John recounts a very specific line that you may be familiar with from the Old Testament in which Yaldabaoth, aka the Demiurge or the son of chaos, boasts to the other archons or gods that there are no gods before him. This is almost identical to what God in the Old Testament says. Hey, this was fun. But I don't know if I necessarily believe this. I really think that if there is a God that he is so unimaginable looking that there's no way that we can fathom as to what he looks like. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Please leave a comment letting me know if there actually is depictions of him. But as far as I remember when I was taught biblical religion was that God was so divine that you could not even look at that entity because it would just petrify you. That even the angels had wings that covered their faces to keep them from seeing his holiness. And that's, that's intense. There's no way, that if that's the case, you can describe what such being looks like, you know? But like I said, leave a comment down below. I might be completely wrong. I might have been ed educated the worst way possible. Then just let me know. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video there. And with that being said, have a good day.